Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Yuki and for today's video, I am going to be talking all about my career as an accountant or a CPA. So my experience is a little bit different. I'm Canadian, I went to school in Canada and then moved to San Francisco to work at a Fortune 500 as a senior accountant. I did do two years of public accounting after I graduated, but I didn't do them at a big four. I actually don't have any big four accounting firm experience and if you're kind of new to accounting, those are the like prestigious public accounting firms to work for when you're in school. KPMG, PwC, EY, and Deloitte. Those are the big four accounting firms. Like what every accounting student aims for when they graduate and partially because they do so much recruiting from universities. While you're in school, I feel like it's basically shoved down your throat that you should aim for a big four internship. It's gonna open so many doors for you, which is true. Like having that experience does give you a lot of opportunities, but I feel like we don't hear enough about the other options you have when you're in school. And I'm here to tell you that if you don't have big four experience, like it's not the end of your career as an accountant. You know, regardless of which career path you take, you're gonna be okay. It is such a stable job that you really can't go wrong wherever you go. This might be a long video, but I hope that it will be helpful to at least some of you. So if you're interested in hearing about my career journey, grab a seat, grab a drink, and let's just get into it. Also, I am planning to make more of these career videos in the future, so if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe and also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed so that I know that you guys want to see more. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Starting at the very beginning, I did go to a Canadian university, got my bachelor's and master's degrees in accounting. It wasn't something that I ever really enjoyed, but just something that I felt like I had to do just to follow that kind of career path. I feel like when I chose it, I didn't even really know what it was. Like I didn't know the difference between like business and accounting which might sound really dumb, but that's actually like what I thought. Like I didn't know what was different about accounting. I didn't know about the big four. I didn't know about audit. In school, I felt very like inadequate and I wasn't able to get into a big four firm to do an internship. And when I was close to graduating, it felt like everybody around me had these great internships at these big four accounting firms where they got return offers for full time. And I was just kind of sitting around and just kind of feeling lost and not passionate about my career and that was a really tough time for me I just didn't feel like I knew where I was going in life I didn't feel excited to be entering the working world and just having a full-time job in accounting Thankfully, I did end up getting a full-time job offer as a junior accountant at a mid-sized public accounting firm. And I'm actually so glad that I did that instead of a big four because first of all, like the work-life balance is better. You still are very busy during like the busy times. Like accounting is very seasonal. Now looking back on it, it was such a good experience to have. Public accounting experience I think is very valuable especially like early on in your career. It really helps you in getting your CPD license and also gives you really good opportunities when you leave public accounting. So after working around two years in public accounting, I kind of realized that I didn't see myself doing this over the long term. Like I didn't want to become a manager or a partner of the accounting firm I was working at. It just didn't seem like the right lifestyle for me and I didn't enjoy audit and tax enough for me to kind of stay there over the long term, you know, having no passion for accounting in general really made it hard to work very long hours in that job. So I kind of realized that it was time for me to move on and go to maybe an industry role. That's where I kind of started my job search. 
I was kind of leaning towards moving to California. Um, I always really liked the state. I did live there for eight months when I was doing another internship and I kind of always wanted to go back there afterwards. At the time I was looking for jobs, I was working with a recruiter for like jobs in Toronto and I was also doing my own job search on the side for roles in California. Yeah, just when comparing the jobs, I think I just wasn't excited about anything that was in Toronto. I kind of feel like I had my mind set on moving already. so. Naturally, like I was drawn more toward these super like cool and fun companies in San Francisco with all these great perks and just offices in these great locations with great weather and lots of stuff going on. So I was kind of already leaning towards moving to California. I'm not gonna lie, like that job search was tough because a lot of these jobs either wanted big four experience or they couldn't relocate me or they wanted, you know, industry experience, which at the time I didn't have. So it was um, pretty demoralizing to say the least. I definitely didn't feel super great about myself when I was applying to these jobs and dealing with all this rejection. Yeah, it was rough, not gonna lie. But I really did try my best to, you know, put my best foot forward in all of these job applications. Like I was reaching out to people, trying to get people to refer me and just, like really, really trying my best on top of working like long hours in audit at the time. After all of that, which felt like forever, I finally ended up getting an interview at a Fortune 500 company in San Francisco. And, you know, just ended up really clicking with the team and by some stroke of fortune, like ended up getting that job offer. And I think I was just so like, so over the moon at getting that job that it kind of made everything worth it. I ended up moving to San Francisco and just really loving that job. And after the pandemic started, I did end up moving back to Toronto, but I'm still working for the company in San Francisco. They are super accommodating and um, I'm just really grateful that I was able to move there and also come back and continue working for this company. Really happy that I left public accounting when I did. 100% the right move for me. I really value my work-life balance and I think that public accounting was just, it was never gonna work for me long-term. So I'm really glad that I left when I did. And if you're feeling the same way, I would just say there's no point in staying if you don't see yourself doing it long-term. And a lot of these companies, they also want industry experience. So it's not just about public accounting. If you wanna be in industry long-term, I would just say definitely get your CPA and move to industry as soon as you can after that. Because even though it might help you to to stay in public accounting until you become a manager. For me, like it wasn't worth sacrificing another like two or three years of having basically no work-life balance. So it was 100% the right choice for me to leave public accounting as a senior. So that kind of takes me to today. And I'm pretty sure that this video is gonna be like all over the place. So hopefully that whole journey made sense to you. So that is my background, my career path. Leaving to industry was 100% the right choice for me. And I am just one of the many, many examples of people who don't have big four experience, but are in very good places in their career. If I do say so myself, I am very happy where I'm at. Um, as far as accounting goes, I like, you know it's not my passion, but I do enjoy having that work-life balance and being able to, you know, go to grad school and do YouTube kind of on my free time. Like I think it says a lot about the work-life balance that I do have. So I'm very, very grateful for that. And I wouldn't say that it was a breeze to get through. Like I feel like I definitely paid my dues working through my internships and working through public accounting. Like if you're in public accounting, I really feel for you and hang in there because I know that it is very tough and work-life balance just seems like it's non-existent sometimes. So I picked out some questions from my DMs and also like some comments from past videos and also the questions that I asked to my subscribers a couple weeks ago when I was planning to film this video but didn't. So the first one is, can you tell me about the day in the life of an accountant and what I'm doing right now. So right now at my current role, I formal title is senior technical accountant. My role consists of doing a lot of research into accounting treatments and also 
also preparing memos and answering what any like questions that other teams have regarding any complex transactions they're going through so it's kind of cool like you see like the big picture of your company like anything big that the company is going through and working in a larger company there's like always a lot of interesting things that are like kind of going down and it's really cool to have the inside scoop like I get access to like all the agreements that come in that's significant and it's really cool to see like articles about it in the news later so yeah that is a lot of my job I would say during the quarters like when it's not like month end close or quarter end where we're trying to close the books and do the financial statements and PBCs like I'm doing a lot of research day to day we kind of always have a couple of projects on the go which has been really interesting and keeps things different and yeah and around the month end and quarter end times I'm doing like reconciliations, journal entries, um, preparing our schedules for our external auditors, doing anything that's needed to like help the books close. So I would say um, every day is kind of different, but you kind of know what's coming up because it is so cyclical. So the next question is why I chose accounting. And I feel like I kind of touched on this, but to get more into it, it's really just about the job stability for me. And just knowing that I'll have money coming in like every two weeks, that's something that's just always been very important to me. And I think it's just something that stems from coming from an immigrant family I don't have a safety net if I don't do well in life you know like that's a lot of pressure to put on myself and it's made me kind of risk averse in terms of my own career I think that's why I was driven to choose accounting in the first place it is so stable companies are always going to need accountants definitely chose accounting for the job stability and the steady income just to keep it real with you guys next question is was going to school for accounting difficult do you have any tips for people who are going to school for accounting it was tough to do school in accounting but you know at the end of it i was really happy that i got my degree if you're in school for accounting right now i would just say just know that it's going to get better and not to put too much pressure on yourself one tip i would give you is to try to find internships because that really does help you in lining up a full-time job or just getting experience in general in the industry it makes your job search a lot easier when you have relevant experience to talk about it doesn't even have to be audits it can be an industry i mean i did internships all over the place i mean i did one for public accounting I did one for the government and I also did internal audit for a corporation and I think just having that wide array of experience also helped me to kind of learn what I wanted to do in the future. So next question, um, did you need to have a work permit or a specific visa to work for a US company remotely? The answer to that is no, like you only need a visa if you are working physically in the States. Um, I did need a work visa to move down and work from San Francisco, but when I came back to Canada, I was actually transferred to our company's Canadian entities. So I'm on Canadian payroll and I don't need to have a work visa when I'm living here. With that being said, if you're working for a company that doesn't have a Canadian like entity, then they will not be able to accommodate you. The last question is, how did you find a job in San Francisco as a Canadian CPA? It definitely takes a lot of like hustle and like doing a lot of things on your own because you really have to sell yourself as someone who is willing to learn and will fit in at the company. It definitely took a lot of rejections, a lot of job applications, and I think at the end of it, what helped me get this job was just having a really good attitude about moving and about learning new things. Also, I think having public experience, like public accounting experience, really helped a lot too because that's always a great experience to have regardless if it's big four or not big four just that skill set is very valuable if you really want to do it then there's a lot of jobs available in san francisco and it's definitely possible for you to find one it's 100 percent worth it and i'm really happy that i did that i do have plans to move back in the future i hope that this gave you like another perspective on what you can do after you graduate with a degree in accounting there's definitely so many options and i just hope that 
hearing about my experience helped you a little bit. And if you have any questions, feel free to DM me or leave me a comment and I will try to get back to you or I will make a part two of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. As always, I hope you guys all have a really great week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.